Um, I'm showing that it's nine o'clock, so uh, we'll go ahead and get going this morning. Um, first item of business is to make a determination um, of this being an essential function of the governing body, which is a requirement. So folks, if you would uh, please take a look at the agenda items that we have today and review them. I submit to you uh, that they are essential business to the county because they are a critical part of the ongoing budget process. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? So moved. I have a motion to approve the agenda submitted by Commissioner Wheeler. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Second by Commissioner Malone. And uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? It's not opposed, so that's uh, three in favor. Spence with the roll call on that and have the agenda approved. So the first item for your consideration this morning or information, there won't be any action taken on any of this today, but this will be uh, information presented from both the election commission and Sheriff's Department. So first is the Election Commission. I see Maybell on the line. Uh, would you like to go through your budget, please? Um, well, I have. Um, maybe maybe we'll have, start. Maybe we'll start with Mitch. Mitch, would you like to just sort of present uh, the overview, and then we'll let uh, Maybell come in and tell us. Sure. Uh, let me back up here a little bit then. Um, after after receiving the rest of uh, uh, after receiving the sheriff's budget, uh, we went ahead and plugged those numbers into our uh, uh, FY twenty one budget projection, and uh, you'll see that on the screen. Uh, we actually got uh, you know used up a, a bit more of our fund balance reserves. Um, as a result of that, uh, but this is where we are currently, uh, you know, what, what we're currently projecting uh, as we move through FY21, given the revenue projections and budgets as they stand. Uh, Mayor, I might point out, Mayor and I discussed this a little earlier. One other thing that you all need, uh, that, that I'd ask the budget committee to consider is that our projected expense number um, includes our agencies, public safety agencies at the amounts that they, that we budgeted for them last year. Um, we have received, uh, their request for this next, uh, for FY21 and, uh, the mayor will be established or, uh, will be setting up a, a meeting to listen to those requests at that time. But just so that you know, um, their requested amounts for FY21 are not in our expense projection yet. Uh, simply, we've got what we contributed to them in FY20. Um, to help you kind of uh, work through the general fund, uh, general fund numbers, uh, Mayor thought it might be helpful for you to see our various departments in order of budgetary changes. Uh, so uh, what you have here is uh, those departments that have uh, changes in their budget numbers from FY20 to 21 uh, ranked in order of largest to smallest. So um, as you can see, we're looking at, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about $2.4 million expenditure uh, increase before the public uh, for public safety agencies and any uh, salary or uh, employee compensation enhancements within the general fund. Just wanted you to have that overview. And you should have all received a, a, an email shortly ago that really has all this in one packet um, for you to look at instead of being piecemeal. But having said all that, uh, we'll turn to the election commission. Uh, and I will uh, make the point that you know, the election commission, um, there is a, there is a maintenance of effort requirement with the election commission in that it's tied to, uh, 
it's not as specific as like the maintenance of effort related to the schools, but you do have to, as a commission, you do have to provide additional funding when there's additional elections. And then uh, and next year in FY21, we will have two elections. Uh, this year we had, maybe we had one, correct? The uh, president. Yeah. So next year, you, and you will see uh, an increase in, uh, in, in expenditures in the election commission uh, for their anticipated cost of that uh, additional election. Uh, we've also uh, built in a full year's worth of rental uh, on the uh, uh, ACE hardware facility. Um, we have not ratcheted in the utility cost related to that, but uh, in the big scheme of things, that's not a significant number. Um, Maybell and I talked yesterday after she and her um, election commission met, and they actually had, uh, they've got a couple of changes that they want to uh, add to their budget. Um, one of them has to do with uh, increasing their postage amount uh, due to the fact that they believe they're going to have more absentee voters uh, because of our COVID-19 issues uh, in August and November. Uh, so they believe they'll need to send out additional uh, uh, um, absentee ballots. And, and unfortunately, they don't get to just send them at 50 cents a piece. Uh, I think that Maybell aren't, aren't they certified when they come back and, and, uh, Anyway, the, the postage on those are a little bit more. Uh, and then the printing um, of additional ballot cards for those absentee mailings, uh, they're looking at another $5,000 in their printing cost. So you can see the summary here. Um, we're looking at, uh, you know, the salary and benefits increase uh, is due to having, you know, additional election workers for one additional election. Um, the uh, you can see where the total expenditures are going, uh, where they've been, and where they uh, will will end up in future year. Maybell, the last time we had two elections was what in eighteen or nineteen? Uh, eight. Let's see, eighteen. Okay. We had three elections in two thousand eighteen. Okay. Um. So here's the summary of you know what what the election commission is is looking for in terms of uh, additional funding. Um, we will uh, receive. I don't know if we'll receive it in this current fiscal year or next fiscal year, but we do. Uh, the presidential preference uh, primary uh, that we held in March, uh, Maybell's estimating we will receive you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 to, to help us offset our $500,000 of year-to-date cost uh, in the election commission this year. Um, here's, uh, I guess I'll, I can put either, let's see. Yeah, let me use this one. Um, so Maybell, uh, I don't know if you're looking at this on video or if you're just on the phone, but what I have on the screen is uh, the uh, expenditure budgets uh, compared to uh, FY21, F projected for FY21 uh, compared to FY20, and then our actuals for 17 and 18. And I'll, I guess I'll probably ought to turn this back over to you so you can talk about some of the more specific line items. Uh, well, I am looking at that, but I am just on the phone. I, I printed the, or you gave me a copy of that of that you sent it to me and I printed it off. Um, but uh, the only uh, thing that I increased, as Mitch said, uh, after I submitted the budget was uh, the postage and printing. I added 5,000 to each one of those. Um, I don't know what is going to happen as far as the election. I don't know what the state is going to require us to do. Uh, I know that they have said that they are going to provide masks and um, gloves for all the uh, 
election officials and uh, the staff uh, for the, uh, this election. Uh, so, and I don't know what else we can expect uh, from the state or what the state is going to require us to do because of the virus. So, uh, I, I don't think my budget is has gone up that much considering that we are going to have two elections instead of one. And this is a presidential election. So it's going to, there's going to be more people voting. And I think there's going to be more people voting absentee. So do you have any questions? Uh, my, so do we um, expect to uh, receive any revenue on either one of the other two elections since they're both federal? Uh, usually there is, is not, well, there's never any for August and November elections uh, or May primaries. We only get reimbursement for the presidential preference primary. Uh, now, I think there is going to be some help for uh, some things that we will need because of this uh, COVID-19, uh, but we don't have specifics on that yet. Uh, some things they, the state says they might be able to order for us uh, and other things. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be in form of a grant, uh, but it, it will be for specific things. And that's, that's all that, that I know at this time. Okay, so the, the last year that we had two election was the, uh, was 2018. So that's 2018, 2019 actual in the column. Um, we showed around $40,000 for part-time personnel. And the request for this term is 105,000. Can you tell me what that difference is? Okay, that, uh, uh, let me see if I can find it on my list here. Okay, in, uh, 1819, there was, um, well, there would have been two elections. Yes. Um, I can't really tell from this, uh, Mayor. Uh, I know that it, it costs about, I don't have those numbers in front of me, but it was about 40, uh, some thousand for the March primary early voting. Uh, and that was just the early voting. And that this line item that the early voting people come out of, also anyone that works in the office comes out of that, that's part time. And that's where the early voting uh, officials are paid. And that, that's for the nursing home voting um, and um, early voting for all three locations. Uh, and this, um, this past election, something, I'm, and it's not showing on this paper that I have, but um, election day got taken, some of the uh, election day got taken out of early voting or vice versa, I can't remember. But, and that, that threw the numbers off there. So, um, but it, it will take, um, it will take about at least $90,000, I'm thinking, just for early voting uh, workers. And that, that includes um, uh, the people that work the day before election helping to um, uh, 
give the the officers their supplies, helping to load their supplies and get all of that downstairs uh, where they can come through and pick it up. Um, and um, that includes uh, coming back uh, on election night. Uh, uh, we have uh, two people that comes and helps with that on election night. So, and then we have uh, extra people in the office on election day. So all of that comes out of those two line items, uh, the part-time and then election workers. I hear you. I was just wondering why it's so much more um, this time than it was two years ago. That was really my only question. You know, it's like two and a half times the, the amount. So I, I, at some point, we probably need to get an answer for that. I'm sorry, say that again. Well, hey, Mayor, if I'm, I mean, what you, your early voting uh, or your, your, your cost for the election for personnel, you do need to take the election worker line 193 and the part time personnel 169. Um, those two numbers give you about $155,000 in 2018 19, mm -hmm. you know, as compared to. Two hundred and two thousand dollars in FY twenty twenty one, right? Which is, I think, what you were where you were going with your question. Okay. Anyway, uh, questions, uh, Commissioner Wheel, Commissioner Malone, anyone else? I had a, um, one other question. When the lease that we have on the Ace Hardware Building. When does it run out? The one year. Jim, I'd say it's somewhere around the end of the calendar year. Um, maybe more like January, something like that. It was. It was that's a, I think that's about when we did it. Maybe February. Yeah. I think it was February. It will be. It will run out. Or February will be the last month, if I'm not mistaken. This, this budget budgets it all the way through June of next year. Is that correct? That, yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, it does. It's We've yes. got six in the rental. We only had 37000 for um for the current year, <laughs> FY21. So, yeah, I mean, you've got 12 months of rent in here. It. It's a um, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe the total rent for a year was 70,000. About 77, I think. For 12 months. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I only am showing um, 49, uh, five for the next, uh, for this year coming up. Uh, and uh, that, if that's the case, then I don't think that leaves enough to pay rental on the uh, the early vote or the election day voting location, and um, the rental on the postage machine. And uh, you know, I mean, we, we've got the sheet I've got's got eighty-one thousand six hundred dollars in there for rental. Right. Okay. Let me find it here. Uh, okay. Line, line that's, 351. That's, that's, on the, that's on the last one that Mitch uh, sent me. Yes, that's correct. Right. That's that's what we're yeah that's that's what we're looking at. So. Okay. Jim, are you saying <laughs> that you, you think we ought to budget only through the end of the current lease? I think that might, we need to make sure that, I don't, I think there's been somewhat of a disconnect with the election commission about the need to get this plan done sooner rather than later. And I don't want to see us come up on the February and, and be basically, we didn't have any choice this year, the commission didn't, but to approve that lease because we had an election coming up. 
we'll be in the same boat again if we're not careful. And I think maybe it'd be better if we just budget through the lease and let them know, you know, you got to have a plan after that or, or we will not have that building. You know, um, just, that. just for your information, I, about, about two months ago, I can get the date. Um, I sent the election commission a letter uh, to that extent. Yes, sir. Uh, the expectation was that the uh, election commission would first plan before the, the 11th hour. Um, so anyway, haven't heard anything yes, back I, yet. I, I, uh, I did uh, get that letter, and uh, uh, we are uh, when when this uh, lease was done. Uh, and I remember in the budget committee meeting, uh, uh, Mr. Sell was asked if if the lease was renewed, would it would it go up? And he said it probably would. Some. So I have not. Uh, been in touch with him to find out what you know what that lease would be, uh, but I can I can do that uh, and see what if you think we need to put it in the budget for uh, another year. Now there is a possibility that there will be an election next year. Um, I was talking with Mitch if um, uh, Rusty Crow wins. Uh, the congressional seat, then his seat will be vacant. And there, Nashville informed me there would be an election to uh, fill that seat. What date would that be? Uh, they they did not say. Uh, the governor would uh, uh, call uh, a writ for an election, and then uh, he would. Uh, he would set that day. I mean, when it, it depends on when he calls for it. Uh, but I would think it would be early in the year or uh, we would have uh, three counties here that is not represented in Nashville for several months. That would be a total county expense? Um, I think so, but I'm not sure. I, I would have to find that out. I, I have not worked through uh, one of those uh, where we have a special election. Mitch, we need to think about that because that would be in this fiscal year. And I think that emphasizes the problem I'm talking about. I, I just checked and that lease expires January 31st, 2020. Right. So if we ended up with an election the first quarter or, or even if it's March, April timeframe of uh, 2020, we'll be in exactly the same position we were this past year. Um, and I just, I think we ought to, you know, budget this where they, and you know, make sure they understand that uh, I, I don't, you know, I, I, my impression was that commissioners were not thrilled with the idea that we were having to go ahead and do that with no plan to move the election office, just we're paying 75,000 for, or 77,000 for, one year to have an early voting location, basically election day location here in Jonesboro. That's a lot of money for that. And I think uh, commissioners, at least my expectation would be that they get some plan. They seem to, you know, when they've been before us, and I'm not talking about you, maybe I'm talking about uh, the commission. They seem to think that it's in our court to, to get this plan together. It's really in their court and we need, and I appreciate your letter, Mayor. I just think this is something where we can back that up uh, as a commission and say, you know, look, we've, we budgeted to fulfill this commitment, uh, but we don't have a, it's not a simple matter of the, the lease going up and we keep operating as normal. I mean, I, I would not be for that if we don't come up with a plan where we're either going to lease purchase the building and move everything over there and have a plan for how the building is going to be used. That's another thing to this. It's not just, you know, that's a lot of space. We've talked about coming up with other uses and the election commission needs to engage in that. Again, I'm talking about the commission. That's not, not. You know, I understand. Yes, ma'am. Well, kind of related, related, I assume that lease has a 
I mean, we spoke about it having a January 31 expiration, but I'm assuming it has some sort of 60 or 90 day notice requirement. I'd hate for our hands to get tied because we didn't give proper notice. And I'm sure our county attorney has that date on our calendar, but but we need to be sure we give proper notice to at least give us the option of not renewing the lease if that's what what the county chooses to do. Yeah. Okay. I um, that. Maybe I think the other thing we need to do is to um, for you to help us understand what it would cost to add another election. So, so obviously all of, all of the support staff that exists, there's no additional cost there, but all this part-time people and, you know, election workers and all that, what does it cost? Mm -hmm. What's what's it going to cost to manage a um, an additional election if we're faced with that? I think, I think we ought to at okay. least consider that as we put this budget together. Jim. Okay. I'll work on that. So we'll expect some revisions, I, I guess, right? It, would that would it be realistic to be able to do that in a week? Uh, I guess my thought, the reason I asked that is I'm, I think, you know, if we could pick a day next week to have 911 EMS and any of the, the folks that we need to hear from from uh, that sector, maybe we could maybe we could get an update on the selection commission then. Would you all be in favor of that? Sure. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Is that reasonable? Maybe I'll to get us an estimate by next week. Yes. Uh, you're talking about for the election for next year, if we have to have one. Possibility. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes, I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions um, for Maybell? Concerning the election commission, no question. I have a question of the budget committee. Um, in the rent of eighty one six, there's thirty two thousand, which is for the months subsequent to the expiration of the lease. Do you want me to take that out? Is that what I'm hearing? Or leave? I would, assume, I would assume you need to leave in because that money's going to get spent, right? No, he's talking about that's the money for the period from the from the end of the lease to the to the end of the fiscal year. Oh yeah, I, as I understood the comment, yeah, that would get revised and removed. Okay, is that correct, Commissioner Wheeler? That that would be what I would think. I'll do it. Okay. Anything else, Maybell? Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, um, Mitch. You want to get us? You want to get us started with the sheriff's department? You, maybe we start with the sheriff. Okay. Big one. Um, lead it back. I know she was going to step out while we did some uh, work with Maybell. So. We're here. All right. Excellent. Okay. Hello. Um, sheriff's. Uh, submitted uh, their um, their budget for next year. Um, in the budget, of course, they are requesting some, one of the big things, and I think Lito will probably want to talk to you about it some, is, um, you know, that the enhancement of, uh, of uh, uh, personnel compensation uh, to get them more competitive. I know that's been on the, on the, uh, uh, board for a while. Um, there are some major um, replacements or some major expenditures that the sheriff's anticipating in FY21 and and uh, which consists of uh, actually I think replacing radios, uh, body cams, car cams, um, some technologic, primarily you know technology stuff. Uh, their ballistic vest, you know, they do have expiration dates on those so they'll be looking at uh, significant spin for for ballistics. Um, Rick, Lita, you want to jump in the the shed, the actual the sheriff's department, the jail or courtroom security, but just the sheriff asked here, and because y'all do a much better job at that than I can explaining it. Uh, 
I don't know about that, Mitch. <laughs> um, the courtroom security budget, I don't believe there were any changes to that. Correct. That's correct. So, um, the sheriff's budget, where, where would you all like to start? <laughs> I would. I, I don't want to go line by line, and I don't think you want me to go line by line. Um, just want to talk about the increases. That that's what I would suggest, and I mean, you know, the main the, the big ones are are you know essentially the you know the radios and whatnot. And maybe Rick can, you know, I, I understand what's happening there, but I don't know that the budget committee does. So, well, and I'm. I, Probably should have had Alan here today to discuss the radios, but I know that he said he and the mayor have discussed it. Yeah, well, but not recently. Okay. I'll get somebody to call Alan and we'll see if we can't get him up here. We'll talk about some other stuff before we talk about that. Um, some of the um, biggest changes were Uniforms, you'll see a $75,000 increase. That's line 451. That's to replace um, expired SWAT ballistics vests. They expire every five years. Ours have actually been expired for a year. We tried to stretch them out, but that's just really not smart business. So it's about, they're about $2,500 a piece to $3,000 a piece for a SWAT vest. Um, so that's what that calls for. Um, our servers are, need to be replaced, and I'll let Rick speak to that. Yeah, we bought our servers uh, right about the same time the county bought theirs, and I think the county's in the process of doing uh, theirs this year, so uh, ours are right along the same schedule, uh, starting to run out of space, and they're at close to end of life there. So uh, that's the, uh, the servers. Uh, the, uh, the next item there, law enforcement equipment, that should be our uh, watch guard uh, body cameras and car cameras. Uh, we've uh, researched it and the uh, company figures it's gonna be about uh, five years uh, for the lifespan of those. Uh, it's, it's not something that's set in stone. It's something they will start just failing. We, we haven't had them long enough to have a track record yet to be able to count on. So uh, we've got, uh, we went ahead and put the 100,000 in there uh, to cover that so that we can, so it'd be there if and when these things do start going. How old are they? Is this, is this the uh, we, start, we started, we bought them over the course of about three years. Uh, some of them are six years old. Uh, some are uh, five years old and some are four years old. So we've got it. We bought them over a period. We uh, tried some out to start with to make sure they were going to do like we thought. And uh, so far they've held up. We've not lost very many at all. Uh, so, uh, so far so good, but we don't want to just keep wishful thinking here. We thought we'd better plan for it. Did you cover the watch guard? Um, yeah, that's what I was just got done talking about, the servers and then the watch guard. So I got both loose. Um, the other large ticket item is, of course, vehicles. Um, cost of vehicles has gone up, but we haven't gone up that much. Just um, we added $49,600 to replace law enforcement vehicles and equipment. Um, so it took that to 480,000. <coughs> and Alan is on his way. The sheriff made contact with him so he can come and discuss the radio system because that's above my intelligence level. Um, I think those are really the large items in the sheriff's budget. Do you all have any questions? Commissioners, any questions so far? 
if we can move on to the ship, to the jail, but I believe. Sure, this, may be a, this may be a question more for our finance director, but Mitch on the on the vehicles, I guess it's akin to school buses in some ways, but we normally just pay cash for those. We don't finance them or lease them. Uh, that's correct. I don't, uh, I don't know if Washington County, I mean, the, the folks over at the Sheriff's Department probably have better history on this than I do, but I, I don't call us for having leased vehicles. We never have. Um, that doesn't mean that we never will, but just right now, I know Alan's done a lot of research on that. It's not really been financially as feasible for us to lease because then you have no replacement parts. If you have vehicle right. crashes, yeah. things like that. So, because Alan's very, very good at keeping um, vehicles that have been totaled to use for parts, you know, and that saves quite a bit of money over time. That's that's one of the reasons too. Leases, believe it or not, for police cars are expensive, um, and it's just been a better a better decision, business decision to go ahead and buy them and own them. Because if you lease them, they want to give you all the equipment on them, and that drives the cost up. And the equipment may not be what we're using. So I think we're better off buying them. And the equipment can be passed down in a lot of cases. Yeah, and that's true. The equipment we have now in a vehicle, when it's um, no longer in service because of high mileage or it's been wrecked. We can, Alan pulls all of the equipment from it, the cage, um, all of the law enforcement equipment, he can pull out of that vehicle and put it to a new one and use it. If we lease, we can't do it um, because it's fixed to the vehicle. So, and that's right. a huge, does that make sense? It does, thank you. Yeah, I'm sure you guys stretch them as far as they can. And then even when you guys are done with them, they may have a life elsewhere, so. I don't know that we're ever done with them. Alan finds a use for them all the time. <laughs> so he does a great job with them. That's for sure. And he'll be here in a few minutes. He can answer any other questions you might have on the vehicles. Um, anything else on the sheriffs? Did you want to flip over and get us started with jail? Well, that's, that's what I was doing, uh, moving on down to that. Um, hey, but, Lita, before we uh, before we leave the sheriff, the actual sheriff's department, I've got up on the screen. I don't know if y'all see it or not, but um, we also asked the departments to provide their their long term or next uh, two to five year capital request. You know things they think they may be needing. Um, what we're looking at, Lita, on the screen. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the. Uh, uh, you're looking at, I uh, wanted to clarify this, you're looking at $100,000 a year from over FY21 through 25 for those uh, body cam uh, and car cam system replacement. Is that correct? That's correct. And okay. that's, that's a guess, a best guesstimate. These are, these are new, you know, for us, but we don't know really the life, how long they'll last when we start tearing up. I mean, Rick, Rick's the expert on that, but yeah, uh, and with the absence of a track record, we're just having to go on a, a fifth of the cost of the, the the total cost a year, and so that's why we're we settled on the hundred thousand. Once we get a track record, now we can uh, hopefully adjust that down, but we'll just uh, you know strictly have to wait and see. Uh, also, the the thing everybody knows about technology is it's constantly getting changed and improved. So uh, the hundred thousand there uh, would keep us up to date as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, eliminate any big expenditure for a complete replacement. Um, uh, Leader Sheriff, you want to touch on um, the state uh, mandate or so for that's kind of driving this firing range uh, issue? Right, we. For years, we have, I, as long as I've been here, and I, the sheriff can probably tell when we started that, but for at least 20 plus years, we've shared a range. We've used Johnson City's range, um, but both of our departments have grown to the point where that's just not feasible anymore because the, the firearms qualifications that are driven, you know, by the state um, state law and the mandates, we have to fire, we have to qualify so many times a year. SWAT has to qualify. We just have got to the point where we were fighting for time on the range and it just, we, we couldn't get our people qualified 
um, with their schedule. Plus, weekends are usually used to do the handgun permit classes for the citizens, and we don't. We currently don't have anywhere that we can do those classes anymore. We had to stop doing those last year. So, and we we get a lot of um, a lot of interest in those classes. But you know, most departments our size have have their own firing range and training facility. Um, I, I I couldn't give a, a price on the land. Um, I know that there's been some property that the sheriff has looked at with um, Lawrence County. Earl Shell owned it hey, on the land. Yes, ma'am. And I don't. I'm assuming that's still available, but that's just something I'd like to discuss. Uh, we want to put your mind. Is, uh, right now, if we when we qualify and we shoot night courses, also that's part of a mandate to the state. We have to drive all the way to Greenville. Greenville's good enough to let us use it, but uh, it takes a lot of time uh, for the guys uh, to try to go through a class that we might have here and then go down to Greenville to qualify. And uh, it's just a long day. Plus, you know, like uh, Chief said, we've always, matter of fact, I got an old contract somewhere in Johnson City where uh, uh, I think Ron England signed it. And uh, I don't know really what happened. We just kind of got crowded out. I think they rented out to a lot of folks, and that's that's their business. But uh, the thing about it is we could really use a range of our own, and we talked about building a range where the volunteer fire departments can build a fire tire and all that, but I don't know if that's uh, ever feasible. That would be up to the county commission and the budget committee on what that would cost to do that. But uh, they, they liked it pretty good. And, uh, you know, it's uh, we'd like to have a training uh, facility for us, for the volunteer fire departments, for whoever uh, to qualify and to do their training on. It's it's one of our, next to the jail, is probably our number one liability to yes. the department is training. Okay, any questions, anything else on the uh, Commissioners, uh, anything else on the <coughs> as it relates to officers? If not, we'll move on to the jail or the detention center. Um, uh, mayor's aware of some of this, um, you know, in terms of some infrastructure changes that need to happen over there, some water heaters. Uh, being replaced. Lee, why don't you all, you or Chris or whoever there is that want to talk about the jail needs. Um. Um, the first one on your on your list is uh, an increase in the medical contract for inmate health care. And I, I really worded that wrong. It's not a contract increase. It's just an increase in the cost of health care, medicine, medications, and that type of thing um, to cover that of course right now our head with our head count being wonderfully low um hopefully we can save a little money but as soon as they lift the state of emergency our lead up lost your uh, audio same here yeah, I can hear you here. We lost it. Well, it was originally meant to be And like the laundry, the kitchen equipment, none of that has been Yeah. Done. Hey, hey, Chief, Lita, we, somehow we've lost your all's audio. I don't know if it, it uh, we can just barely hear you. I think I might have it, Rick. Okay. Yep. Testing one, two. <laughs> Later, we're going to have to up your bandwidth over there. And that's on the schedule for noon today. So. A couple hours. Exactly. Uh, yeah, let's try to see how. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I believe we can hear you now. Can you hear me now, Mitch? Yeah, I, I can hear you, Lita. pair of equipment. The, the equipment in this facility was meant for 350 inmates. Recently, we've been using it for the last couple of years. We've been using it for 650 to 700 inmates. Um, we have two washers and dryers to you know, do laundry for 700 people. They go 24-7. Um, that equipment just tears down. And the kitchen equipment is all And again, it, it's feeding 700 people um, most of the time, and it's meant for 350. So, Randy's having to, you know, the cost of repair and the things that are tearing up is just increasing. So, that's why we um, asked for that. We've already, I believe, we're already over in that line item this year, aren't we, Mitch? Uh, this is through March 30th. year to date. Uh, yeah. You're at um, food prep uh, supplies and food supplies. Our connection's terrible. We're at what, Mitch? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, you were, uh, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit, but does. Uh, yeah, we are over. Uh, you Did know, we lose again. Pardon me. It looks like everything just broke. Oh, no. Yeah, I think I think we've got some delay in data moving back and forth from. The, How much are we over now? I'm sorry, I don't have my. Yeah, looking at repair and maintenance um, for equipment, uh, we. 13,120 13, year to date through March. Thank you. you know, the budget was 9,200. Um, you know, but, you know, the thing is, is I'm always, uh, always, I always like to see where we haven't spent as much, you know, for example, for under, for travel because of the COVID-19 and budgeted 8,000, you know, some of those things will offset some of those lines. But yeah, if you're looking at going forward in the, in the next year, then, you know, you probably do need uh, to add some money to your repair, your equipment repair line. Okay. Can you hear me now? I think we're back. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry. We, we lost you completely. Um, 421 and 422 are food prep supplies and food for the, for the inmates. Um, Mike Ford asked that we take those up 10%. Uh, just the increase in the cost of food and the increase in numbers of the inmate population. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that our headcount is down right now because we are, we are going to run out of money this year. We're not going to have enough money to finish this out. So that's what that, it's just a 10% increase on those two line items. And again, that's due to, I'm anticipating as soon as this is over, if it's ever over, um, our headcount will shoot back up to 700 easily. Um, water and sewer is, you know, we have no control over that. And um, so we just, we asked for an increase in $25,000 there because we, that's about what we're going to spend this year. We're going to run, I believe, short in that line item too. Um, 515, go ahead, I'm sorry. Mitch, I just added five thousand dollars to five fifteen just for those liability claims. I, I have that may be too much. I just don't have any way of knowing, you know, how many lawsuits we're going to have or how many car wrecks we're going to have. Right. Let, for the for the budget committee, well, we have a five hundred dollar deductible on liability claims. So you know, if we have a a, a vehicle accident or if we have a a, a suit, uh, you know a, a you know, some kind of wrongful, whatever suit, um, we've got it. We'll have a, 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 it'll cost us $500, uh, assuming we have no, you know, that we still have state protection. Um, we had one claim this year. Uh, I don't recall what it was for, but that was a 500, 
dollars mm -hmm. there in the March mm -hmm. column. Uh, yeah, whether, you know, that, you know, Chief, probably what I would suggest is, you know, budget it at, you know, a thousand or whatever. And then, you know, if you have multiple claims, you have multiple claims and come back, you know, later in the year and pick those up. But um, we've got a challenging budget this year. So, so to the extent that we can, you know, squeeze some lines, um, it's going to make it awful easier for these commissioners to figure out how to actually get it funded. So, and that, I, that's fine. You know, I want to, we, Sheriff and I both want to get along, you know, and make, we're not trying to make it difficult. I believe we've had more than one claim, but I just think they weren't paid out of our budget. I believe we've had several claims this year. Um, but you have, you're right. Well then, well, well, then we probably need to move those claims from where I'll, I'll dig back and see where those are. And then, you know, if they're covered over in general and administrative or something, then, you know, probably what we need to do is just move those dollars out of GNA back to, back to the sheriff's department. Okay. Okay. Right. That'd be great. I appreciate that. Right there and then look at that and see where, see where those others got charged in the current year. Um, the next item, line item is to replace, we need to replace three water heaters. And one of those is a 400 gallon tank, has a 400 gallon tank for one of the, for C9, I believe. We have two water heaters for C9. What, the big one is down and if the other one goes down. We will not have any water for that pod. And uh, water heaters are not cheap, I'm learning. <laughs> so, um, but to replace those three, and it's just due to age. And we've been replacing those every year, you know, as we go. And I also added those to the capital um, projects as well to replace two a year. Um, but the reason it's such a large amount this year is because of that large 400 gallon tank is a, it's $55,000 to $56,000 for just that one water heater. Um, 790 is uh, $38,000 to our fire alarm in the original part of the jail is out of code with the fire marshals and TCI. We just got lucky TCI didn't catch us on that last time they were here. Don't tell them, Mayor. <laughs> that 38,000 is what it'll cost to bring that, that back to code. Any questions on that before I go to Capitol? What, what oh, no, about, I still got some more, Don. What about line 709? Data processing? It's a, that increase there. The 133.5? Yes. I can't see the screen, sorry. Yes. Um, that's a security system upgrade because of the Windows can change Microsoft Windows 10. Um, Rick can probably speak to more than that than I can, but that's if we don't change, if something happens, we can't replace our security system. If it goes down, we're down. Because if that. Right. Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. The, uh, it's more than just replacing some computers. It's all of the the uh, PLCs and so forth that run the security system. They're all designed to run the operating system. So we can't change just the machines. We've got to replace, uh, update the whole system. So, uh, well, not the whole system, the, uh, a large percentage of the system. Okay. Can you describe what's in 790? Uh, the generator. Uh, it just says other equipment. The eighty thousand dollars. Yes. Two hundred forty-three. Uh, two hundred forty-three. Two forty-three. Here you go. Line seven nine zero. You've got that's where you've got your water heater, uh, the fire alarm. Um, <laughs> Oh, that same line. In the emergency. Oh, they're combined. Right. I had it separate on the sheet. Okay. 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 Yeah, eighty thousand uh, dollars for the generator for the workhouse repairs to the existing generator for the jail. I assume. Right. We we do not have an emergency generator for the workhouse at all. So if we lose power, we have no no backup system. That's another TCI standard that I that we've just squeaked by um, with that. What? And the generator at the main jail, it just needs some repairs to it. 
what's the capacity? What's the workhouse capacity? I don't think I've never asked that in 12 years, 13 years, but what, um, we can probably house it's less than a hundred. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe, maybe 80 people. They're the ones that go out on the bus crews and work and um, have jobs and can go out during the day and work and then come back to serve their time at night. They're very minimum security. But we keep them, we have to keep them separate because those are the inmates who will also pick up drugs while they're out and bring them back in. So we at least have it contained to the workhouse and not brought into the, the main facility. Yeah. Oh, and we don't, have, we don't have room to put them in the main jail. If I was reading some on workhouses and you know maybe this is stuff they do down in middle and west Tennessee sheriff but it looks like you could actually set a workhouse out on a road somewhere uh, and house prisoners out on a, essentially a job site. Yeah I don't know what, what the liability would be for that uh, because of our security here we have uh, uh, guys who will drive around it at night and all that but you still have to have an officer in there and I can see a lot of liability on the county by doing that and a lot of them did it because they were overcrowded and couldn't build a jail so they just moved uh, moved everybody out in metal buildings at the Calder's workhouse I think uh, a couple of the counties close to us did the same thing until they got the population got the jail six. Gotcha. I still have to serve meals. You know, we keep it's it's just very convenient to have them right beside the facility because of meals, laundry, medicine. You know, the medicals right there if something happens. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, I it was it was just interesting to me that that state statute allowed allowed you to do that. Yeah, I think state statute allows the mayor to run it too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that in the other half of the day that I'm not working here. <laughs> I've, got, I've got 12 extra hours. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure the additional stipend would make up for the liability. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so there, there's your capital for the uh, for uh, this year. Yeah, for for this year. Uh, Lee, do you want to talk about? future capital needs now at, uh, at the jail? Um, we would like to add a washer and dryer to the, um, to the laundry room, just so it would give, we could run two and have one down some, you know, so they're not going 24 um, seven because they're gonna, they're not gonna last long at all if we keep running the two we have the way we are. So that's just the thought process there is that we need, um, we need another washer and dryer to give us three, three each. Um, building improvements. Uh, Randy has probably talked to the mayor about this, but we've got water lines on the side of the original detention center. They're corroding and causing water leaks, which could also contribute to our higher water bill. Um, and it's, it's hard to predict that those lines are just getting old too. They're 25 years old. And that's that's just a guesstimate from Randy on, on making those repairs. Um, building improvements, shower areas in the jail. We we battle this with the jail inspectors every year, and they're they're great to work with us. But um, shower areas are just hard to keep clean. Period. Um, even at our own homes, you know, your showers you got to stay on them constantly. But these showers in here, the inmates pick the paint, they pick the get the but caulking, they everything they can, but the mold and things like that are are terrible in them because they stay wet because somebody's constantly using the shower. But um, what we would like to do is is change because we have to paint them with some ex really expensive paint um, every. We probably paint them twice a year at least, and we would like to just update those with a stainless steel insert. Um, that's what we, the jail inspectors have recommended, and then it eliminates all of that, you know, annual repair and, up, and upkeep. And then we've also added um, just to replace two water heaters a year um, for the next, because by the time we're in pretty good shape after this year, but by the time we get around 
next year we'll need to replace two again. So it's that's just going to be an ever constant need for new water heaters. And then the last is uh, the heating and air condition equipment, the chiller and the boiler. And the mayor is, is a lot more educated about that than I am. I just know that if it goes down, we're in trouble and it will cost a lot of money <laughs> to repair it, to replace it. Mayor, would you like to add anything to that? No, that's actually on the capital projects plan for general government. So um, we've had um, engineering studies done on it. We've got our maintenance people uh, review it as well. So um, we're pretty well prepared to um, talk about pulling the trigger on that and, and phasing that in somehow. I mean, the, the boilers have been rebuilt a little bit and they're not in too bad of shape. There's two of them. So we do have a little redundancy there. The, um, the cooling side is more critical. Uh, they just, because of the load on the building, the number of people in there, um, we actually cool the building 12 months of the year, so um, losing losing a chiller or part of that cooling system in the summer um, would be devastating and would probably cost us a third more to um, fix it and if we have to do it on an emergency basis. And so it's one of those things. The system was, was put in in 1995, so it is at its um, life and not this year, but last year, we placed a, a drive shaft in the uh, uh, cooling system, which was covered by warranty for the most part and built into the maintenance contract. But there's a pretty clear indicator that that piece of equipment is um, headed toward the internal. So anyway, uh, that uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that again pretty soon. Do I see Alan back there in the room? Yeah. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Sorry to bring you in. Uh, That's but, all right. No problem at all. Um, I thought it'd be helpful if maybe you could explain what's really going on with the radios, uh, Motorola's plan, and all that other fun stuff. Um, our two-way radios, portables and mobiles, the, we purchased those back in 2008, and since then, they have a life expectancy of about seven to ten years, depending on Motorola. After that, Motorola will stop supporting parts and any kind of, if it's something we can't fix here, which is usually the a board level problem inside the radio, then I have to send it back to Motorola to fix. If they cannot fix it after that time, they say they will not fix it because they can't guarantee they will have parts on hand to fix it. And that time ran out in December of last year. And after that, we have to replace radios, portables and mobiles both. They're both went out at the same time. Um, City of Johnson City in their budget just purchased them and uh, I think three months ago and they have started receiving clears. Um, we have tried to put this off as long as we could before we started replacing them. Is this a project that you have to do all at once, Alan, or can we phase it in? What's your thought? Sometimes it causes me to have to write multiple programs because the radio will change from year to year and some of the functions. And anytime there's a different function, I have to go back and write a different program for that radio. Uh, also, this is going to affect EMS, volunteer fire, and constant. Uh, and we had kind of kicked around this idea before and we were going to the sheriff's office and keep 
what our old radios were that we took out of service to keep up volunteer fire, EMS, when their radios went down, and then eventually we replaced their. Anything else? I, 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 I lost audio on the last part of that when, when you were talking about um, transitioning the old radios, you know, to volunteer fire and constables and stuff like that. Would you mind repeating that? Joe, yes, sir, I didn't hear you. We, we still have an audio issues. I can hear you now. What was the okay. question? I, you know, I, I lost you when you were talking about um, transitioning the old radios to volunteer fire and constables and those folks. Right, what we were, what we were kind of talking about was using what we take out of service to keep theirs up for a while so that the expense wouldn't be having to replace everybody's radio at the same time across the county. Uh, obviously in the radio system, we are the biggest user. Um, it's, uh, volunteer fire, I think has about a hundred radios, EMS, I think about 115 and constables. If everyone had one, I think there's nine. Um, and and we make up the rest of them, which is the bulk of it, the radios it's the county uses. Does this number cover radios for all of those services? No, this is just sheriff's office. Okay. You, I, Alan, you all uh, looking at our TACAN billing stuff that, that you and Brooke were working on. 265 or so radios in the sheriff's department. Right. Yeah, there's there's a little over 500 radios uh, that the county, in some way, shape, or form, uh, helps support. Um, you know, across all of our public safety agencies. Correct. When Johnson City bought theirs, did they decide to change their encryption component? Or did they leave it the way it is? They or left it. Uh, they left it alone so it wouldn't cost everybody a bunch of money. Um, okay. Everything's going to stay the same. Gotcha. Um, other questions on radios and stuff, Jim or Freddie? Any questions on the cars? We have Alan. He's the expert on that too. Nothing for me. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. A couple of the little components of the budget. Mitch, could I ask a question? Sure. On the drug fund, not the drug fund, but the DTF budgets, has anybody communicated with you that the DA has taken control of the DTF so it's no longer under the sheriff's uh, office? Um, I heard that. I think shared that with me in a text or an email so okay yeah, i don't know I, what the impact that will have but i didn't know if anybody'd let you know that or not does that well, cost just shift over to the da or is it or do they just absorb it somewhere else i think the only thing we had when it mitch for the five thousand dollars for for that was for the dtf directors Bonus or salary supplement, but we we won't yeah. we no longer will have to do that. And we really don't know where the DA is at because it kind of fell. I don't know if it fell by the wayside or or what, but I haven't been communicated anything about who's in it, who's not in it, and who's going to stay in it yet. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Usually that's that 
except for that five thousand dollars that Chief Lightning was referring to, that it's it's expense or revenue re expense neutral to us um, as it's funded. Uh, the grant fund, it's grant and funded by the uh, agencies that participate. Yeah, I think page seven. So I don't know how that will work with the DA being over that now. If you all, because I think everything was run through Washington County's bookkeeping department for them. So let me know what I can help you with on that, Mitch, if I can find out well, anything for you. I guess we should, I mean, we, we probably, I, I suspect from what I'm hearing is that we probably just need to reach out to Gerald Baldwin and see what his plan is for um, handling the finances for that operation. Yep. Okay. The other two components, uh, work release program, we've talked a little bit about that and courtroom security. There's, there's no changes in the request. Uh, is there anything that we need to get on with those specifically? The only thing I would say on the, the revenue side of work release, you've, you've seen a drastic decrease in that. P participants in that pay what we call board bill um, or a, a fee, you know, to participate. We've, we had to get very strict on work release and who we let out of the facility. Um, it would had just gotten too lax and we were having a lot of issues with drugs being brought in and just all kinds of problems. So we don't let very many people out of jail to participate that in that anymore. So um, we just tighten the reins on that. So I would not expect, I, I, I really don't expect to see that revenue number go back up. It'll probably stay about where it is. And and that's at, that's at about a two thousand dollar level. Yeah, it's not. You're not talking a lot of money, anyway. Yeah, we'd actually, uh, you know, we'd actually received what eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars years ago uh, on that, and so that's when we had about forty people out of jail on work release, going to a job that didn't exist, and <laughs> so we. We really tighten the reins on that, just for security purposes. Anything on uh, courtroom security we need to look at? I didn't make any changes to that budget. I think that we're fine there. I need to, if you don't mind, we need to leave the salary line item the same as we did last year. Other than that, I think we're okay. Uh, hey, Sheriff, um, any, I've got it up on the screen. We do have, you know, various reserve accounts that, that have gotten funded through surplus military sales, sexual offender registration fees, asset forfeiture funds and stuff. Um, you know, in, in light of where our budget pressures are this year, um, I'm gonna ask on behalf of the mayor <laughs> to consider using some of those funds to offset some of the one-time funds maybe that, that you're looking at expending in this next year, you know, vehicles, uh, you know, maybe some of the radio cost, but just wanted to throw that out there and, and let you all start thinking about that a little bit. Um, from an accounting standpoint, and what GASB requires is that restricted fund. When, when you start, when you start expending dollars in your new budget year, um, GASB requires that you spend your restricted, committed, and assigned dollars first, uh, which we really have never done um but i would you know offer that up as a it's possibly a, a an impact uh some budgetary help this year to to uh offset the stresses that we're probably going to that we are under so yes whatever uh, the budget committee and the commission uh, thinks about that i don't think we'd have a problem with it. i don't know we but we need to, Chief said, we need to sit down and talk about some of it, but we'll be glad to, to get with you on the home 
whatever we need to do. He's talking about spinning our direction. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I think the auditors put some restrictions on us with the military surplus too, didn't they, Alan? It, it it has to it doesn't have to go back into law enforcement supplies, equipment, vehicles, those sorts of things. Mitch, I may have misheard or you may have cut out a little bit. Did you say that it simply has to be used for law enforcement equipment such as police vehicles, et cetera? Uh, the military surplus proceeds, that's that's what I recall being the restriction. Okay. You know, what you know, they, they receive the surplus from uh, DOD. Uh, we hold it for a year, you know, we have to use it. After a year, then the sheriff is free to uh, dispose of the property, but the proceeds from it do have to be uh, used back in the law enforcement. Uh, I mean, you can't you can't send the money to the schools, or you can't use it for solid waste. You have to use it for law enforcement, and, and I believe we've actually used it in the past for, for maybe some patrol car cost offset. We used it for uniforms as well last Best, year. Ammunition. Yeah. All right, we'll work through that. Um, Probably the last piece there maybe is the uh, some of the revenue. Um, do we want to talk about that as well? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I got that in. Let me find that, Mayor. I'm not sure that I've got that in the uh, in the slideshow. Let me okay. Find it here. Uh, that's, that's okay. We can come back to that again. It's um, yeah, well, we're still struggling trying to get that federal prisoner number yeah, straight. Probably, um, uh, and I'm looking at a desk, so y'all can't see this, but uh, we will receive somewhere in the neighborhood of about 170, 175 thousand dollars in telephone commissions. Uh, that, that the sheriff collects from inmate use um, this next year. Uh, we'll pick up another $60,000 or so in commissions off commissary sales, which uh, several years ago, that number used to be significantly more, but the state took that over in terms of the, uh, 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 the, the blind vendors. And so they actually operate the commissary and pay us a, a, a small what we received in the past. Um, uh, we, we continue to expect that we'll receive about $75,000 in law enforcement training grants, which actually, uh, or uh, that's not the right term for that. That's for the post certification yes, um, that is already built into the expenditure budget uh, because we we dropped those dollars down this this last year to certified officers as a as a pay supplement. Um, Lita, how many how many officers qualified for that? Seems like it was. Uh, oh, I mean, I can go get it, but I. I think it was ninety. So. Yeah, yeah, close to hundred. Close to hundred. Yeah, we have hundred and eight sworn, so turnover. It was probably close to hundred. Right. Uh, it's $600, so we spent, what, 74 or something, so divide that by six. Right. Um, we receive uh, 72000 or so for litter grant, which helps offset um, uh, one of the deputies who actually oversees that pro program uh, with the sheriff. And then, of course, the big are the state contracted prisoner board and the federal prisoner board, and I know it re reduces your, uh, ho hopefully the inmate population that's gone down is not state prisoners. Hopefully we're still housing state prisoners because at least we get paid for those as opposed to our local prisoners awaiting sentencing in court time. Uh, yeah, our state numbers are what went down when with the release for the virus. Um, that's, that's our 
wanted to hear. The federal number, the federal number stayed around 45 or so lately. And, that, and part of that is due to the virus, but part of that is also due to Carter County began, started holding federal inmates. So that affected the number we got. I'm sure they're trying to split it, you know, between us. Okay. But, but between the two and, and we're, uh, Chief Lightman and I are talking about the, the federal prisoner um, revenue. Uh, it's going to be somewhere probably between a million two and a million six is kind of what we're looking at. But we, we're, we're going to have three, three and a half million dollars uh, coming back into the county for federal and state prisoner board in FY21, hopefully. Where it is, I, I think we'll be on the higher end of that, but, but just to be safe, you know, we might stick with the 1.4. Okay. Yeah, our, you know, in times like we've got right now, you know, the, the you know, the, the best practice <laughs> is really to, you know, conservatively make your budget revenues. Um, they'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. Uh, well, I want to stay out of trouble. <laughs> 10, 14 months from now. <laughs> and we're still working on those, uh, trying to get those rates. Hopefully we can get the computer system working. I don't know if you've had any communication with Melissa recently, but um, the level of frustration for sure. Is, is, there, is there anybody that, that I could call or anything we can do to you know, no, it's just their their software. But I talked to the chief deputy for the marshals yesterday, and he's going to um, make some phone calls for me and see if we can't expedite that again. Okay. It, it's been very frustrating for me, and Melissa. Yeah, appreciate the help on that. We we receive what seventy dollars per day per federal prisoner. <laughs> It varies. Carter County's getting paid. I, I just found out this morning. Carter County's getting paid sixty-three dollars a day. Um, Blunt County's getting paid seventy dollars plus. So it'll be between, I would say, sixty, sixty-three to seventy dollars an inmate a day. Okay. If we go to sixty, I did some numbers a minute ago. If we go to sixty. I think I went to $65 a day. We stay around the same number. That'll generate about $200,000 more. Mm -hmm. so here. So where are we now? Where are we now on the reimbursement rate? 50. Oh, okay. 53. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I may be confused or didn't follow, but why are we getting paid so less and how do we get it changed? Is that the software issue we were talking about? Yeah. Well, Carter yeah. County, we've had an existing contract with the feds, gosh, as long as I, yeah. 20, 20 plus years, years yeah, that we've been housing feds. We just hadn't, we're going to renegotiated our contract. I didn't know we could do that. You know, we just thought that um, we had to take what they paid us. I found out some other areas were getting paid more. So that's what Melissa Stagall and I've been trying to work on. Melissa Jones, but um, Carter County's is a little higher than ours because they just got a new contract. They've never held federal inmates before till this this year, so that's why theirs is higher than ours. But that we'll fix that. Okay. Any other questions? That would on be great. Stuff? Thank you. Okay. You know, that covers the agenda stuff. We do have space in here for other budget discussions for FY21. Is there anything we've been going about an hour and 25 minutes? So we want to cover a few more things or, Mitch, I know we had a couple things we might want to throw out. Well, yeah. The, uh... Mayor, may I, I'm sorry, Mitch, to interrupt you, but may I say one thing? I just want to put this in your all's heads. Um, when we met, Whenever that was months ago with budget um, and budget committee voted to pass the $2.50 hour raise for the detention officers. I didn't put that in here 
because I wasn't sure, Mitch, if that's how you all wanted to do it. I just want to put a bug in your ear to fund that for next year. That will be about a half a million dollars. So just want to throw that in there. And that's not any other type of increase. That's just that 250 that you all, um, that we discussed for them, for the detention officers. And just one more thing, and I'll shut up, I promise. Um, we might, will we be afforded another opportunity to discuss some um, more competitive wages for the all? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know if you heard me or not. If we would be afforded a, a future opportunity to talk about more competitive wages for the officers. Are you going to create some sort of a plan that you'd like to present or how, would you, how do you want to do that? Um, I can put together a plan. I'd be happy to do that just present it. I've, I've not really got one prepared for this morning, but I'll be happy to get one together. You just let me know when. Mayor, if I may say something. Uh, sure. I'd, I'd just like to thank you, the commission, and everybody uh, that helped us, our guys on their insurance. Uh, the money will be good, but what really struck me is that you guys cared and, and took care of us and a lot of people don't get that out of a lot of people so i want to say thank you for out from me and everybody in the department you and your team have a tough job we appreciate what you do every day thank you thank you anything else chief or sheriff no sir, no, sir. i think we're done that's enough isn't it <laughs> it is. <laughs> we want to cover any of these other offices or folks. How y'all doing on time? It might be nice to have a little time to look at those before we try to talk about them. Okay, good deal. Um. Anything else for today? I mean, we've got our work cut out for us big time. So, um, the, I think one of the things that that it was, would be worth, worth, you know, studying just a little bit is that um, the, the departments with the increases um, that we started with this morning, because that's, you know, you can see where you can we can make an impact uh, potentially, and um you know how we're going to deal with this result here so uh, open for suggestions and input but uh, other question is um i think i think it would be really important to hear ems and 911 and any of the others that maybe ema that we haven't yet heard from would would next wednesday morning work for y'all as far as um uh, Coming back together and seeing if we can. That works. Brooks, Mr. Malone, are you available? Yes, that works for me. Is that is that a good good next step, or would you like to see something different? I think that's a real good next step, particularly with the radio issues with some of these other entities as well. Yep, good point. I think we'll hear that again, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else for today, Mitch, anything else you want to cover before we uh, sign off for this morning? Uh, uh, you know, unless somebody has some questions, that's uh, that was the intent of this morning is to do what we did. 
I might just throw out a question or an idea, and, and I have only kind of glanced at the full commission meeting packet for Monday, but I'm assuming the budget amendment we approved in budget last Wednesday relative to the TIF funding, I'm assuming, I mean, that is on the agenda. I think I saw it there. Is that correct? Came through budget, so yes, yes, it is currently on the agenda, correct. Right. Well, the, and, and on, I, know that, I know that you've had an opportunity to negotiate a little bit with JCDA, so that may be something uh, you yeah. want to consider move into a different meeting. Yeah, I just wonder if there may be some value in us pulling that off the agenda, and 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 I can raise that issue with the chairperson on Monday. But I just wonder if there'd be some value to to pull it from the agenda and hold it till next month. Uh, my assessment from the JCDA was that, that they would be willing, you know, if if the the development agreement was revised to come under the state guidelines, I think they would allow the JCDA would be agreeable to allow that to impact not just the coming budget year, but the current budget year, which means that in our current budget it would save us that 80 plus thousand dollars, which I think would be a positive, but it also frees up those monies for the coming fiscal year. Um, so I don't know that we're prepared to discuss that at this next full commission meeting, but hopefully by May we can do so. I think you've done a nice job negotiating uh, for the, on the county's behalf with JCDA with that. And we thank you. Uh, sounds like a good plan for Monday. That's willing to do that. I think that's a good idea. I would like to suggest one other thing with that. I think there'll be questions that'll come up about what what are the pros and cons of doing of, of going under the state statute for the county. And I think we need to have both the county attorney and perhaps one of the outside counsel that works on this type of stuff uh, to to speak to that because when we went to the training on uh, it was supposed to, it was primarily TIFs but they also addressed pilots there was some discussion about that under but I think it might have been on pilots that under the statute the this we had a better deal here because for the county because under the state statute they could do some things without the okay of the county I think that may have been on pilots but I know that's caused some concern among commissioners about doing this. And I think it would be helpful and make people more comfortable uh, supporting the idea if they could have some advice on that. Mr. Well, Will, I, that's, that's really good information. I think that, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of components. Um, you know, one is at the $25,000 threshold for the county input and then the you know, I've also heard people ask about whether or not it would extend the term. And so to get some of those details put together would make some sense. Um, when, you know, maybe, maybe it makes sense uh, just to, to bring it all the way back through committee, um, maybe through, uh, I guess at CIA, um, and just if, we, if the commission were going to consider adopting that state law and the, um, at a subsequent meeting, and probably should see the committee structure through, don't you think? Oh, I agree, and, and I'm definitely not the expert, although I have done some reading. One of the question marks I do have, and I think the $25,000 issue, I think it may only relate to the pilots and not the TIF. I think coming under the state guidelines, it does, it does remove the the debt limit or or the amount of TIF that can be done. But I think the argument there is the county's reviewing and approving all of them anyway. And so what does the, you know, what impact does the limit have when the county's saying yay or nay to each one of them? Um, the timeline or the time frame does it extend? I'm not sure there. Um, the other thing that it would allow that I think is different from our current arrangement is it would allow JCDA to take some management fee um, 
to cover their expenses from the TIF monies, which they, they do not do now. Um, and I think that's limited to 5%, but, you know, 5% of a half million dollars, you know, 25,000. So um, not a lot, but I do know that that's one of the items. So I can have some communication with Allison and see if she could potentially do a little research for us to confirm some of those items. Jim, do you think we can do it with local attorneys? I know that it seems to me JCDA has an attorney, and then of course we have um, a county attorney who's well versed in a lot of this stuff. What do you think we need to um, add um, Mr. Mamathoff to the call, possibly? I think at the very least, we ought to bring you and Allison up to talk about whether you want to, to bring in uh, Mamantoff or somebody else. We just need to be sure that we've got some somewhat independent advice and it's hard to do that in this situation because there's only a couple of people that that are you know the experts on this statewide and but it, it if I think if you all felt like yeah we we're, we can give we need to build the confidence level of the commission you know on whatever we decide on this so whatever you all think that takes, you know, I know Allison is, has really done a yeoman's work to get up to speed on this stuff. And if you all feel like, yep, she can do it, then that's, I'm fine with that. But if she or you feel like, you know, we could use some outside help on this, then that's fine too, I think. It, it'd be money well, well spent if we can, if it helps build some consensus. Well, and, and JCDA had a conversation about potentially making Mark Mamontoff available. So part of me thinks that if Mamontoff got involved, it would be at their expense and not the counties. The travel costs are definitely less these days. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot, obviously I cannot commit that, but that based on the conversation Friday, they talked about having him available if needed. The, the issue there becomes if, if you know, from my perspective, if he's coming up here as representing the JCDA, it's more a sales pitch than it is, you know, a, a, and they, now, and I'm, I appreciate, I think the JCDA is the one that put on the, the training that we got when we first got elected and, and it was wonderful. And he was very uh, fair and even handed with the, the explanation. And so I'm perfectly comfortable with Mamontoff, but, we might want to be careful about how we arrange that because you know we do need some frank advice for the or, or, or frank information for the commission to be able to make a decision based. Well, he is he is um, Ross um, through a number of these deals, um, most recently um, how arrangements, and uh, I'm pretty sure he was involved in the EBM Paps uh, project. So. Um, we could employ him on our behalf if, if that changes the uh, dynamic a little for you. I think that makes it clear, you know, who, who he's advising there. And then my, I had a conversation in the last week with um, some folks up there in Johnson City, and we talked about that. Mantoff was doing more of the, the big picture stuff on that for them. And then on the individual deals they were using, I can't remember the name of the attorney on the, on the other firm. But that, that to me kind of made Mamontoff, you know, more, um, I thought, you know, if, if he were the one that, that came and talked to us, it would, I think that still works because he is more big picture for them and not, not doing the day-to-day -day work. Well, in terms of a resource, I don't think there's anybody better than Mamatov because I think he actually wrote the state guidelines, basically. So, so he is certainly well versed on the subject, and I think can answer any question. I think we've had him speak on this topic before in the past. So, um, would would you feel the need to have him at the uh, committee uh, level first? I, I assume we'll be still meeting electronically at that point so and if it if it's if we're trying to be conservative with our expenses if, you know you could could invite the commission to be a part of that meeting to, to sit in on that meeting 
uh, with questions or, you know, and, and again, I think we ought to leave that up to you. You and Allison feel like, you know, you can handle the, C, the CIA committee level and then have him at the commission meeting, whichever you, you all think, I'm fine with however you all want to do it. Okay. With, with that prospect in mind, we'll work on it a little bit between um, now and Monday. How about that? Yes, sir. Okay. Other, uh, Commissioner Malone, did you have anything else? Well, no, if it's all up to you, I, I will shoot Allison an email. I'll copy you on that subject just to say, here's the questions I have. Here's my understanding. Is it correct? So, Absolutely. It works for you, too. <laughs> works for you mostly. Um, okay. Commissioner Wheeler, Commissioner Malone, or uh, Mr. Meredith, any other in information we need to bring before this meeting today? All right, then. Hearing none, we are adjourned, and uh, we'll see you later tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Be well.